Why are we doing chakra meditation? To awaken the chakras to higher levels of perception, to become conscious of our karmas and samskaras and rise above them, to break the cycle of samsara and to return to Sat Chit Ananda. To help us in this quest, we have been bequeathed a very priceless gift, and that is a description of the chakras and their functions in each of the three realms. So that when we do our practices, our prayers, our focus, our inward focus on the spine, we can be more precise, more lucid, more effective on making changes in ourselves, changes that we want to see in sanskaras that we want to illuminate with consciousness. And so what we're going to map out for you now is what are the physical, the astral, and the causal functions of each of the chakras. The value in this is that if you identify in yourself, I'm having trouble with this physical function of my body, or I'm having trouble with the emotions, these types of emotions, or I'm having trouble with this thinking process. That describes me. This is a clear guide to where we should focus chakra meditation, because those are the sanskaras that are disturbing us. That being said, we need to explore now what are the physical, the astral, and the causal embodiments? How are they controlled and influenced by each of the chakras? The first chakra of the seven chakras that we will explore appropriately enough, Muladhara chakra. Muladhara chakra at the base of the spine, its physical symptomology if we're wondering, how am I doing with Muladhara Chakra? It's physical symptomology is the urogenital system. Sexual function, urinary function, troubles, disturbances, health, power. These are the functions, the indications of the healthy functioning of Muladhara Chakra or dysfunctions. If the samskaras are dysfunctional, if the karma is bad, we have trouble there. If the samskaras are functional, if the karmas are not bad, we're healthy there. In the astral dimension, the best English words we can come up with is the emotion of anger or strength. It's not the best word, it's the most adequate word. Anger, the ability to push through, to create something new in spite of resistance is not a bad thing. I will not be put aside. I will change what is. I will not be content. This is a plant pushing up through a rock. This is the tantric meaning of anger. Doesn't have the negative connotation necessarily of the English anger. But it's a good word in that all of the emotions and the thoughts and the physical functions of every chakra are good or bad depending on our samskaras.